Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends and, and colleagues, a warm welcome from the European office of the Konrad Adenauer Stiftung in Brussels. My name is Hardy Austria and I'm the director of the CAS office here in the capital of Europe. I welcome you all to the second day of this year's Net at Work conference, and it is my great pleasure to kick off the second day, which has a series of exciting panel discussions to offer today. But before we start, let me use the opportunity to thank, first of all, the Wilfried Martin Center for organizing the conference again this year in a digital format. We highly appreciate that you made it possible to bring together the EPP affiliated network to exchange views and ideas and engage in discussion. Thank you very much for that. Thank you also to our friends from Austria and Bavaria, the Politische Akademie and the Hans Seidel Stiftung who joined to contribute to the conference just like us. And of course, a big thank to all the participating foundations from all over Europe who joined this conference today. As Mikolas Zerinda has rightly pointed out yesterday in his opening remarks, we are living in exceptional times. I won't go into details as you are all familiar with that, but I would like to highlight one point. As the work of party foundations and think tanks is largely based on bringing people together, our work has been quite heavily affected by the pandemic. But the Net at Work conference is yet another example that we all have learned to adapt quickly to the current challenges and made wide use of digital solutions. It's not always easy. And I found myself amazed of all these possibilities and wonder what would have been our reaction if such a pandemic would have hit us 15, 20 years ago. Maybe I don't even want to know and to imagine. In terms of digitalization, this year has certainly brought a push and I'm happy that the world is moving forward. And on that note, I would like to turn to the overarching topic of this year's Net at Work Conference, Geopolitical Europe adapting, reshaping, engaging. As I said, the world is moving forward and as it is Europe's needs to find its path where it would like to head towards. As it is often underlined, the EU is absolutely a big player in international system if we look at our economic strength and our role in international trade. But are we a strong player in other fields? In some may be, but we will need to learn to play the role as a strong international political player much, much better. There are many challenges in our direct neighborhood, be it Belarus, be it the conflict in Nagorno-Karabakh, or the tensions in the Mediterranean Sea with Turkey. Those are only some examples, as they are currently on the political agenda, and the European Union needs to be able to find solutions regarding such challenges. We will have panels today that also touch these topics, but I would like to raise a general concern here. The discussion that the EU needs to become a stronger geopolitical actor isn't entirely new. It has been discussed for long, and the recent disagreement between French President Manuel Macron and the German Minister of Defense, Annegret kramp karrenbauer around the topic of strategic autonomy shows that there is yet a different understanding. But I'm advocating to finally bring the discussion to a next level in order to, under, to eventually lead to actual challenges. I believe there's a chance in the Conference on the Future of Europe, which will hopefully be kicked off soon. I see a chance that this conference could bring concrete results to reform the European Union, not only with regard to the European elections and the Spitzenkandidaten principle, but also regarding the role of the European Union in the world. I believe that this is becoming more and more important to finally newly define it. Right now, we find ourselves in a situation where we will soon have a new US administration. Thankfully, I emphasize, it will be an administration that will play most likely a much more constructive international role. One example is that they will join the Paris Climate Agreement again, and we seem to be much more side by side again in climate Christians. But let's not be naive. It might be easier with the Biden administration, but it won't be easy. There are frictions in the transatlantic relations that will remain. Take US tech giants, for example. We are only able to tax Apple, Google, Amazon if we act as a united European Union. An example that shows 
that being a serious international actor isn't only about military strength, but also simply about defining the political areas where we need a coordinated approach. I'm sure our discussions today will touch upon these points as well as others. We will start today with the first panel, the geopolitical challenges of the Eastern Mediterranean and the EU-Turkey relations. After a short break, we will continue with panel two, a Europe that protects its heritage. And at a quarter past three, we will have the panel, the art of the Green Deal, which will follow as panel three. Finally, panel number four will turn to the future of EU enlargement and new momentum for the Western Balkans. We have an exciting program ahead of us. Once again, thank to all of you, to the organizers and participants, and let's go into the discussions. And I pass the floor to Michaelis Sophocleus, moderator of panel one. Michaelis, the floor is yours. <laughs> 